going on, Vinyl Community? Welcome to another video with The Record Spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be doing part two of favorite albums of artists that I collect. Uh, a little while ago, I did part one, which covered letters A to D. And if you want to peel back and check out that video, you can go ahead and click on the icon in the top right-hand corner. For part two, we are going to be focusing on letters E to K. And like I always say in all my videos, Enough of the chit chat. Let's jump into what this video is all about. Starting off with the Eagles, and this is their third album on the border. Uh, on this album, they started to kind of work in some more kind of rock influences, and this is also Don Felder's uh, first album with the band since he had just joined. Uh, the notable hits on here are Already Gone and uh, The Best of My Love, but there are plenty of other great rock and tunes on here, such as um, On the Border, the title track, James Dean, uh, Midnight Flyer, and then my personal favorite, which is a Tom Waits cover all 55 absolutely fantastic stuff from the eagles and then we break into some proggy territory with emerson lincoln palmer and this is their third studio album trilogy uh this album as well as brain salad surgery uh kind of has all of the essential elements that make up the ideal emerson lincoln palmer record uh we have the epic endless enigma parts one and two with a little fugue uh sandwich right in the middle uh, from the beginning which is a traditional greg lake ballad and it kind of makes for a perfect single uh, uh, we have Hoedown, which is a Aaron Copeland piece, which basically has ELP doing uh, what they do best, and that's doing the sort of rocky, proggy, you know, sort of adaptations of classical pieces. Uh, we have the very beautiful but melancholy title track trilogy, uh, very piano-based in the beginning, and then the band kicks in right in the middle, and it just hits a whole other level. And then we have a little bit of humor with uh, The Sheriff and Living Sin, and then we have um, Abaddon's Bolero, which is Keith Emerson kind of going in a bit of a classical kind of vein. Uh, if I go for some ELP, this is the album that I pull out first and now we get to the f's and next up is farner and this is their self-titled debut of course as you can see that is the mofi pressing absolutely fantastic sounding really recommend it um half of this album is hits uh we have feels like the first time cold as ice my personal favorite star rider um head knocker long long way from home um and then we have some other cool rocking tracks uh such as at war with the world damage is done fool for you anyway just a really sensational uh mid to late 70s rock album excellent stuff and then we have the Spaceman himself, Mr. Ace Frehley, and I picked his album Anomaly. Uh, this came out back around uh, 2009. This was his first um, solo album, I think, in 20 years at the time. Uh, we have some really rocking tunes on here, like Foxy and Free. Uh, I remember Outer Space was the single off of this when it came out, and I really dug that. And then we have the really awesome pain in the neck we have a cover of um sweets fox on the run uh then we have genghis khan change the world which is a really nice tune space bear which is a reference to the infamous um tom snyder interview from 1979 all you kiss fanatics will definitely get what that means and then of course we have another installment in the fractured series that he does with all of his solo albums dating back as far as the 78 solo album with um fractured quantum which is like layered acoustic guitars and it's an all instrumental thing really really awesome very beautiful excellent album for mace and then we have one of my childhood favorites, and that is Peter Gabriel. This is the third self-titled album he did, or as it's called, Melt, because obviously he's melting on the cover. Interesting thing, this was actually taken with a Polaroid camera, and as soon as the film came out, uh, they just smudged his face, and that's exactly what you get. Um awesome opener with um intruder a very creepy kind of ominous track which has uh phil collins playing this drum rhythm doom doom da doom doom da doom doom da it's just it's so creepy and you hear like creaking glass and footsteps and just very dense instrumentation fantastic uh then we have no self-control um i don't remember one of my favorites uh family snapshot games without frontiers and then of course Biko. uh that's like the real kind of hit i guess you could say off of this record uh this is absolutely awesome stuff 
And speaking of Peter Gabriel, the next record up is Genesis. And this is their 1973 album, Selling England by the Pound. Absolutely phenomenal record. Um, on my copy, there's some black smudge in the top right-hand corner. I'm just kidding. That's Steve Hackett's signature. Uh, we have epics such as uh, Dancing with the Moonlit Night, which starts with Peter singing a cappella. Very beautiful, dramatic, kind of jazzy towards the middle. Uh, then we have the single, I Know What I Like, which was a huge hit for the band at the time. Uh, Further Fifth, which has the sensational guitar solo from Steve Hackett, perhaps his signature solo. Uh, then we have More Fool Me, which is a nice back Ballad sung by uh, Phil Collins. And then we have the piece of word vomit that is the Battle of Epping Forest, where basically Peter is singing about 20 words per second on, on this song. It's crazy stuff. Uh, my favorite part of the record is After the Ordeal, which for the longest time, it was kind of like just a, a filler kind of song. And then it wasn't until I saw Steve Hackett live around 2015 uh, and he worked that song into his live set and I just loved it upon then and it just resonated with me then it's a beautiful track and crazy enough uh peter and tony wanted uh to not feature uh that song on this record and i don't know what they were thinking because it's a beautiful piece of music and then of course we have the epic cinema show and it ends with isle of plenty uh which basically reprises the theme of uh dancing with the moonlit night and uh, works in a lot of like British, you know, company names with the lyrics. It's kind of like a double entendre kind of deal. Um, very, very English. So if you're an American, uh, you might have to wrap your head around this. But if you get, you know, British society and humor and whatnot, then you'll love this record. But honestly, from a musical standpoint, it's gorgeous by all means. And then we break into some newer territory with one of my favorite bands, and that is Ghost. And this is their second album, Infestissumum, from 2013. Uh, out of their records, this kind of gave me a little bit of like a late 60s kind of rock vibe. Uh, lots of keyboard work uh, on this record, which just has like a nice sort of carnival-esque kind of sound to it it's really really awesome uh it also features perhaps my favorite ghost song which is uh goulet slash zombie queen the first two minutes it's just it harks back to 70s prog it's very lush sounding with the waves of synths and then it kicks into what i call the scooby-doo bit which it sounds like you have the mystery gang chasing after the villains in the mansion it just sounds absolutely phenomenal and then of course we have uh classic ghost tracks on here like year zero Hero, uh, Monstrance Clock, um, Idolatrines, a really cool deep cut, Body and Blood, Secular Haze, uh, just awesome stuff. So if you want to hear a bit of a newer band doing some really cool retro sounding hard rock and metal, Ghost is the band for you. And then we shift right into punk. And uh, we have Green Day's Kerplunk. And when it comes to Green Day, I love the old school early stuff. Like those first several records from, you know, the early 90s up into like the early 2000s. It's just sensational. Not to say that I don't love things like American Idiot and such, but they just really had something going for them in their early years. Uh, but this is their second album. Uh, this came out back in 1992, I want to say. Uh, 91, 92. Uh, this was Trey Cool's first album with them. They're... Uh, then new drummer and we just have some great early green day classics on here such as 2000 light years away uh one for the razorbacks uh, we have an early version of welcome to paradise which would then get re-recorded uh for the dookie album which was like their major label breakthrough um christy road one of my favorites um one of my lies um no one knows uh words i may have eight uh just really great amped up uh, melodic punk stuff from the early 90s, Green Day's Kerplunk. And then we get back into the classics with Jimi Hendrix, Axe as Bold as Love. Now, before I even talk about the music, it is so hard to not love an album that looks like this. Like, this is just beautiful looking. It's vibrant, colorful. It's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, this features one of my favorite Rockin' Hendrix tunes, and that is Spanish Castle Magic. And then one of his greatest 
compositions ever, and that is Little Wing. And then we have things like If Six Was Nine, um, Castles Made of Sand. Um, one of my big time favorites from the experience alone is the song uh, She's So Fine, which is sung by Noel Redding, the bass player. Just a really great groovy psychedelia kind of love song in a sense. And then we have the closing track, Bold as Love. And it just has that epic moment where the band stops in the middle. Mitch Mitchell does the drum fill and the phasing kicks in. In, then the band kicks right in and it is just absolute ear candy um it's just an absolutely beautiful record and then we shift gears again in the metal territory and we have iron maiden's 1984 album power slave now right off the bat when you have an album that starts with aces high then goes right into two minutes to midnight there is no turning back this album is phenomenal and every possible form uh, we have some cooler deeper tracks such as uh flash of the blade and the, the duelists and then we have an instrumental called lost for words big aura which is a great showcase for maiden's sort of classic you know traditional dueling melodic guitars kind of motif uh then we have the title track power slave which has a nice sort of egyptian motif which makes sense with the album cover being what that is and then we have the proggy epic rhyme of the ancient mariner uh when i was getting into maiden around 2011 i was kind of just getting all their albums within like several months that year and uh when i got this one uh, this was the one that I basically went back to and revisited the most. It was just love at first listen, and I just kept coming back to it. And kind of like with ELP's trilogy, when I'm in the mood for some Maiden, this is the one I go to. And now we break into some folky prog territory with Jethro Tull's Songs from the Wood from 1977. Um... Toll started out very strong in the late 60s uh, with some really great early kind of bluesy rock albums with things like This Was and Stand Up. Uh, they established themselves with Aqualung, and then they just went fully into the prog stratosphere with concept albums like Thick as a Brick, Passion Play, uh, Minstrel in the Gallery, War Child. And then they decided to get into folk a little bit. And for me, when it comes to Tall, this is what I identify them the most with. They just have that touch to them. And uh, this album is absolutely beautiful by any means. We have the title track, starts out a cappella with acoustic guitars. And then that kind of continues with um, Jack in the Green. Oh, we have the nice driving hunting girl, one of my favorites uh and then we have my favorite christmas holiday tune and that is ring out solstice bells i'll take that over any other marginalized christmas rocker uh the whistler which was the single velvet green uh this is just an absolutely beautiful album if you have not heard it uh you definitely need to do yourselves a favor and check this record out you will not regret it it's crazy how much you know the genres kind of shift in this video because now we break into some mid-2000s British indie rock. I'm telling you, I'm all over the place when it comes to my tastes. Uh, we have the Kaiser Chiefs, Yours Truly, Angry Mob. This is their second album. Um, I picked this up in the summer of 2008 thanks to the song Ruby, which was in Guitar Hero 3. And um, I basically listened to this that entire summer, and it basically grew my love for this band, and I became... I guess you could say perhaps one of their biggest American fans because these guys are from Leeds in England and they've only come across the pond to the States uh, a couple of times maybe. You know, it's very rare that they do tours in the US. Uh, but this album is fantastic. Aside from Ruby, which is perhaps the band's signature song, uh, we have things like um, The Angry Mob, um, Everything is Average Nowadays, uh, Love's Not a Competition, But I'm Winning. Uh, Paramore did a really great um, acoustic cover of that particular song. Um, and then we have some other cooler songs like Learnt My Lesson Well, I Can Do It Without You, Hyroids. If you're looking to kind of expand your indie rock palette and you haven't heard of this album, definitely check it out. And then we get into some American prog. I'm telling you, there's a major emphasis on prog in this video. It's crazy. Uh, we have Kansas, and this is their self-titled debut album from 1974. This features the iconic album cover with John Brown uh, holding the rifle in one hand and holding the Bible in the other. Awesome stuff. Uh, we have Can I Tell You, 
uh, Lonely Wind, which is a beautiful piano ballad. Uh, Steve Walsh just sings that song absolutely beautifully. Uh, Bellix's uh, Journey from Miriabron. Um, and then the closer, uh, Death of Mother Nature Suite, is just raucous at, by all means. This is just a great record. Kansas, you know, as... You know, as much as people like to say prog is a is a British English kind of genre, these guys did a great job in terms of kind of making it a bit more commercial friendly, as you could see with the other albums they've done with Left Overture and Point of No Return. But they were really honing in on those English uh, progressive rock influences with this great debut album. And now we get to the core, the glue of progressive rock and perhaps progressive rock's most important band, and that is King Crimson. And this is their 1974 album, Starless and Bible Black. Uh, this features my all-time favorite King Crimson lineup, uh, that consisting of Robert Fripp, John Wetton, Bill Bruford, and David Cross. Just an absolutely phenomenal lineup in a diabolical mixture of talent. If you listen to the live recordings uh, of this lineup, your jaw will hit the floor. It is amazing the amount of power that these guys delivered live. And speaking of that notion, uh, the best way to experience this lineup of King Crimson is live. And so what they did, um, aside from recording a couple of bits and pieces in the studio, things like Great Deceiver, Lament, and The Night Watch, uh, they actually recorded several shows live and what was cool with their shows was that in between their regular songs from their records, they would do a lot of improv bits. And since the tapes were rolling, uh, they took some of those improvs and placed them here on the records. Just simply because, you know, there was a certain vibe that they got from playing on stage that they certainly just couldn't, you know, reproduce in the studio. And so, you know, songs of that sort... Um, became like we'll let you know uh trio the mincer and the title track starless and bible black just some really great jams which some are kind of funky some are very ethereal um some are just very slick with bill bruford's percussion uh the waves of the violin coming in and out from david cross and then you have john wetton's just essential bass tone and then you have the main highlight of this record. Now, this particular song was recorded live, uh, but um, it was already a, stru uh, a structured song, and that was Fracture. And you listen to that song, and if you're a musician, you ask yourself, why am I a musician when this song exists? Trust me, I've asked myself that. Fantastic record. And the last record I'm going to show you guys is one of my favorite band of all time. And when you see this record, granted, I've established the fact that these guys are my favorite band. But you're probably going to be scratching your head considering the fact that I just showed things like Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer, Jethro Tull, King Crimson and such. But with these guys, you know, I have such a strong, immense, you know, bond for them that it's a part of my childhood it's nostalgia. It's something that I can't part ways with. It'll always stick with me. And also, it simply rocks. And at the core of it, once a rocker, always a rocker. Kiss. Love Gun from 1977. This was the first Kiss album I ever listened to. I had it on cassette uh, back when I was like two or three years old. Just picture a three-year-old listening to songs of suggested nature off of this album with things like the title track, Love Gun. Uh, Christine 16, not seen in the greatest light in terms of today's kind of climate, but it certainly is a staple for them. Uh, we have Shock Me, which is uh, Ace Frehley's vocal debut. Uh, Peter Chris's Hooligan. Uh, then we have Almost Human, one of Gene's greatest Kiss compositions. A bit of a deep cut, but it's just a sinister rocking tune. Uh, Plaster Caster, uh, we have a kind of remake of Rock and Roll uh, All Night with the song Tomorrow and Tonight. Um, then we have the cover of Then She Kissed Me. Uh, this is just a sensational record. Um, basically, at the time when this album came out, Kiss had already placed themselves as a part of Americana because, you know, all the kids, you know, were going after these guys. They had the comic books, the action figures, the merchandise machine was just rolling, and they were just delivering album after album. And this is just pinnacle kiss. You really cannot get any better than this. 
So there you guys go. That is part two, letters E to K, of favorite albums of artists that I collect. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, be sure to check me out on Patreon. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the record spinning. Thank you.